The X is not a valid member of Y error happens when a script is trying to look for an object in the game, but it can't find it. To fix this, start by reading the words right below the error message that begins with script. This tells us which script has the error and the line number that the error is coming from. After stopping the playtest at the top of the screen, open the script by left-clicking these words or by following the path it describes. In this case, I need to open the server script service, then the folder named examples, and that leads us to the script it was talking about. If you can't find the script, search for it by its name at the top of the explorer. After that, go to the line number that we saw near the error message. There are a few reasons this error could be happening, so I'll walk you through several examples. First, check if you made any typos on the line of code with the error. This means you should make sure everything is capitalized and spelled correctly. Based on the error message, we'll look for the word pat. In this case, I misspelled that word when trying to tell the script to look for an object in the workspace called part. With that in mind, it becomes easier to understand what the error message is saying. The word on the right is the name of the place we told the script to look inside of, which is the workspace. The word on the left is the name of the object that we told the script to look for, which was pat. Because it couldn't find it, it said that it was not a valid member of the workspace, which is another way of saying that an object with that name doesn't exist inside of the place where the script was looking. Once we fix that and start the game up again, that error goes away. But now there's another one on line four with the word brick color. When we look back at the script for that word, it looks like it's spelled correctly. However, if we compare it to the other time brick color is mentioned, it looks like the letter C in the word is supposed to be capitalized. So we can go ahead and fix that on the left side. If we start the playtest, we can see that the code ran successfully, updating the brick color of the part. The error happened in this case because the script was trying to look for an item called brick color with a lowercase letter C instead of talking about the property that has the same name but different capitalization that chooses the color of a part. One way to find out the correct spelling and capitalization of an object or property is to look for it in the Explorer or Properties windows. So, if I didn't remember what the name of the part was, I could look at the Explorer, open the workspace, and then see how it was spelled there. For its brick color property, I'll first make sure that the Properties window is enabled through the View tab at the top left of the screen. Then, I'll select the part and look for the place where the property appears in that window. You can also do this through the script by starting to type the name of the object or property that you're looking for, and then use the autofill feature to complete the word. You can look through the options with the arrow keys, then use the tab or enter key to finish writing the word. As a rule of thumb, the first letter of a property will basically always be capitalized. But sometimes, you might not be able to find what you're looking for, which is what is happening with example script number two. I'm pretty sure I capitalized and spelled the word table correctly, but I don't see it in the workspace. So I'll go to the top of the explorer and type in the same word. In the search results, I can see that there's an object called table inside of the furniture folder. But if the table is still technically inside of the workspace, why isn't this working? Well, when we're telling the script to look for something, we can compare that to telling our friends to look for our math homework inside of our backpack. First, they'll need to find the backpack, open it, take out the math folder, open that, and then they can bring you your math homework that you totally got a good grade on and didn't fail at like me. Our friend had to look through multiple objects to find what we requested, which is what the script also needs to do for this example. We can first tell it to look through the workspace, open up the folder called furniture, and then select the object called table, solving the error. And after all that, 
we can finally run the game again just to see a different error. This time, the error is on the fourth line of code with the word destroy, which has a typo that is much easier to spot, but it shows that the error can also happen when calling built-in functions and is not exclusive to looking for objects or updating properties. But what about situations where the error appears when you're moving objects around in the game? For this example, we'll be looking for an object called homework inside of the computer setup model. The homework object starts out in the server storage service and is moved to the computer setup model a few seconds after the game starts up. As we can see in the output, the error appears right away, and the name of the object isn't changed. This happens because the code runs right away, and it gives up if it can't find what it's looking for. There are several ways to fix this, with the first option being to move the code that's talking about the object further down in the script so that you know the homework object will already be in the right spot. But if the object is being moved from a different script, or if you don't know if the object will be there at all, you could instead change the way you look for the object. Instead of using a dot to search for objects, swap it out with the colon find first child method, which doesn't error right away if the object isn't there. To add on to this, you could include that in a conditional statement to let the script know what to do if it finds the object and what it should do differently if it doesn't find the object. Or, if you're 100% sure it will be there soon, you can use the colon wait for child method to make the script wait up to 5 seconds until the object appears. If you want to change how long it will wait, you can add a comma and a number after the name of the object with the number representing how many seconds it will wait until it gives up. Keep in mind that if the script ends up waiting for the object to appear, it will stop the code that's running right below it, which in this case means that the script wouldn't actually be able to move the homework object from the server storage to the computer setup model in the workspace because the code at the top of the script is still waiting for the homework to appear. If the code was running in separate scripts, or if the code is structured a bit differently, it's more likely to work. In some cases, there's a completely different error that can happen if the object never appears, which I'll create a separate tutorial about in the future. Let's say you've gone through all the previous solutions. You know that an object is in the place you're looking for, the spelling and capitalization is correct, and the script still isn't working. In that case, there's probably one simple reason that might be causing the error to happen. For reference, the code in this example is running in a local script, which is specific to each player in the game. Before we start a playtest, we can see the object it's trying to look for in the server storage, but once we start the game, it disappears. Why is that? Well, there are some services in the Explorer such as the server storage and server script service that can only be looked through by server scripts in addition to scripts that have their run context property set to the server. This means that when we try to look for the pizza from this local script, it can't see the object because everything in the server storage is hidden from all local scripts in addition to scripts that have their run context property set to the client. There are multiple solutions to this, including moving the object into a service that local scripts can see, such as the replicated storage or workspace. Alternatively, the code could be moved to a server-sided script if it's doing something that isn't supposed to be local or specific to each player. It's also important to know that this situation could happen if you create a new object from one local script and try to update it from a server script or a completely different player's local script, all because that object is local and can only be seen by the player who has the local script where the code was run. As a bonus, here are some practice problems for solving the is not a valid member error in different situations. Each of these will also be included in the resources section of the description if you want to try solving these to improve your skills. The explorer at the right side of the screen shows all of the necessary objects for setting up 
each practice problem, including the intended names of the objects and where they should be placed. Feel free to post your answers along with the thought process that helped you solve the errors as a comment to this video so we can help each other learn more. Check out the Scripting Solutions playlist on screen to find answers to more scripting problems, and let me know what problem you'd like me to find an answer to for the next tutorial. As always, have a wonderful day.